Review copy provided by Nintendo. Nintendo, how did you... How did you know this was exactly what I wanted? Click. Hello, my friends, Arlo here, and today we're reviewing... Super Mario Party. This is the series' first entry on Nintendo's new hybrid console. So, the question is... You know what? I usually do my little, is it this or is it that thing here, but I'm completely overwhelmed by options. Life of the party, party pooper, party animal, party foul, party hard, crash the party, I just, I, I can't. So, whoosh, I guess. In ways, Super Mario Party is extremely similar to both Kirby Star Allies and Mario Tennis Aces. All three released this year, and they're all entries in Nintendo franchises that perform solidly and are very inevitable, with many, many titles coming out over the years. More interestingly, though, they each brought back mechanics from older games and were given opportunities to really revitalize and modernize their respective series. If you saw my reviews, you'll know that I feel Kirby and Mario Tennis both failed on this front, offering good gameplay, but a humongous lack of both content and ambition, among other problems. These three titles are also similar in that I hadn't played an entry in any of these series since I was a kid and went into each more or less fresh. Because of how Kirby and Mario Tennis turned out, and because of the general hype surrounding Super Mario Party, I was very excited to dive into my very first Mario Party in years and years and see if it could do what those other games didn't. So, do it? The answer is yes. Ish. The first thing that struck me about Super Mario Party was the presentation. The graphics won't blow anyone away, and it's pretty much the same pleasant, colorful graphics we've come to expect from Mario spin-off games, yada yada yada, but there are more fun little details than I feel like the developers were obligated to include. First off, instead of selecting modes from a menu, you walk around this little hub. It's populated by partygoers and other characters that change around every time you drop by and you can talk to each of them. I know a hub and a menu really aren't that different, but this detail I feel is really important. It's just so much more pleasant this way, and it makes me feel like more care went into the game. It's a little thing, but it's a big little thing in my book. Then some of the areas you play mini games in are extremely pleasant, often with fun little animations before you start. Again, nothing that will really blow you away, but I feel like they could have gotten away with less. Some of the games that emulate real life items and tasks look particularly good. I'll talk about Challenge Road more in a bit, but visually it's the same thing. The environments are nice, reflecting each of the games you play. Uh, having the characters that help you out in the team games just sort of chilling in the background until it's their turn to help you is a really good detail. There's more too, just little things, here and there, sprinkled through every mode. It's like there's a tiny bit more of an awareness of who these characters are and how they might interact than we usually get, and it makes for a game that feels like a little more than we usually get in a certain way. A little more charm, a little more playfulness. As long as we're talking about presentation, we might as well touch on music. Not a lot of it stands out and it's just sort of background noise most of the time, but one thing I do appreciate is just how much of it there is. There are tons and tons of themes here for all the different modes and games, so even if you might not be adding a lot of it to your playlist anytime soon, you won't find yourself tired of hearing the same ditties again and again. Moving on to the gameplay though, the main mode, Mario Party, is naturally the star of the show. I don't know much about how these games used to be. You used to ride around together in a car or something? I don't know, that sounds awful. <laughs> but what I do know is that this is fun. It has you rolling different dice for different characters, taking different paths, using items, and generally just trying to wreck everyone else's day. In classic Nintendo Nintendo fashion, it's easy to jump into without much prep, but offers a fair amount of depth and strategy if you so desire. The random element is very, very strong here. A lot of stuff is simply out of your hands, and at the end of the game, they give out two bonus stars based on random criteria, which can easily throw the whole thing and make all your hard work worthless. This random element is equal parts frustrating and fun. On the frustrating end, you don't want to feel like you just spent one or two hours scheming and plotting and blasting through every minigame only for the last place player to pull ahead and nab the win because you landed on one wrong square and then Toad and Toadette gave them an award for moving the least or something stupid like that. But on the other hand, that's just kind of what Mario Party is. It's not a super competitive game like Smash or Splatoon where it's mostly about pure skill. The fact that everything can go so unfairly wrong so quickly is part of the fun, I think. It's sitting on the couch screaming at each other and at the TV wanting to chuck your Joy-Con at the screen that makes it special. That's just the kind of game it is. And as an overall middling to bad video games guy, I can appreciate taking a step back from the skill aspect for a little while. Many people dislike how few boards the game has, 
uh, there are only four in total. But honestly, I think I'm kind of okay with that. It would certainly be nice if there were more, and I really, really hope Nintendo hits us with some free DLC down the line, but each board is unique enough with different mechanics to change up the gameplay, and games can take such a long time to complete, and there are so many other modes that I guess I haven't found myself yearning for more yet. If I do have one big party mode complaint though, it's that mini games just don't do as much as I feel like they should. I mean, I thought these were the lifeblood of the series, but they barely do anything for you when you think about it. They don't really give you stars or items or anything, they mostly just give you piddling amounts of coins if you win. The best you can hope for is for one of the bonus stars at the end to be given to the person who won the most games, but you can never count on that. Win every game, you're not that much better off. Lose them all, eh, plenty of other ways to get coins. It just feels like you could remove mini games entirely from the main Mario Party mode and there would be very little difference, and that's kind of wrong to me. I mean, I'm glad that they're there, they're definitely still fun, I enjoy them, but less so since they're not that important. You play one game per turn, couldn't they have just had each one award an item or something to the winner at the very least? Not just like, oh, here you go, eight coins, right? Even if they don't always accomplish a lot though, these mini games are an absolute blast. There are a lot of them, they offer a great amount of variety, each one controls like a charm, and most importantly, they are exceedingly clever. I'm baffled that after so many years and so many entries, the team is still coming up with ideas this good. A lot of them are so fun that when they're done, I'm like, wait, no, I was enjoying that, bring it back, I just wanna play that for a half hour. And the fact that you move through them all so rapidly means that it's hard to really get tired of any one game. More often, it picks a game and I go, oh, I get to try this one again. And I fully expected there to be some stinkers, you know, the ones that make everyone groan and seem to come up way too often. But nope, at their absolute worst, they're sort of fun without being particularly clever. Seeing as so many of them use motion controls, I also expected there to be some trouble on that front, but not so. Every mini game that uses motion controls uses them well. It's either something that benefits from the added articulation, or its awkwardness is purposeful as a means of raising the challenge for everyone and making things a little more interesting than they would be with just sticks and buttons. Most importantly though, now we can just shake our Joy-Cons around instead of completely destroying our control sticks. As for modes beyond the regular party, this is another area of Super Mario Party that left me pleasantly surprised. After Mario Tennis Ace's quote, Darth of content, sorry to keep bringing it up, but I think it's an important part of the discussion, I did not expect so many different ways to party. First, you've got Partner Party, which is way more fun than I anticipated, largely because it's just so different from the main mode. Here, you and your teammate combine your roles and move freely around unique versions of each of the game's boards. Much of the strategy comes from figuring out how to land exactly where you want and where each of you should be going, and you can even stomp on your opponents to steal their coins. This mode is a big winner in my book, and I really hope it becomes a series mainstay. And for more cooperative play, you've got River Survival, where four players work together to navigate a raging river, playing mini games to earn extra time and trying to make it to the end before time runs out. This is a really fun idea. You can all steer the raft, so you've got to coordinate and do a lot of yelling to avoid obstacles, and naturally I just love co-op gameplay in otherwise competitive games. Two main problems though. There's a very limited pool of mini games to choose from, seeing as the game only has so many four-player cooperative minigames, so they start to feel a little stale after a few runs. Two, it's a little too easy. The first time I tried it out, I grabbed three CPUs and blasted through the whole thing with plenty of time to spare. It's a little more hectic with real people, but it still needs to be adjusted. The concept is great, but the replay value does suffer. Soundstage is a collection of rhythm-based minigames built into their own little party gauntlet. If you've played a Rhythm Heaven game, you know exactly what to expect here. These are tricky because you gotta move the Joy-Con in such a way that you start moving before you hit the beat, whereas Instinct tells you to move on the beat, but they're still quite fun, and my only real complaint is that they're not included as regular minigames in all the other modes. Putting them together here makes sense, but keeping them from the other modes makes less sense. If the game has a single player mode, Challenge Road is it. I will say though, it's a bit disappointing, despite the nice visual elements I mentioned earlier. You literally just make your way through every minigame in the game, one after the other. It's pretty uninspired, but at the same time, it is sort of fun for a couple hours in that way that sometimes it's just fun to have something to work through, even if it's <laughs> kind of pointless, because for whatever reason, people just like to have boxes to tick off sometimes. My biggest complaint here is that it's not as challenging as I feel like it should be. Some of these games have a specific goal in mind, like beat this game without getting hit, that kind of challenging thing, or they're otherwise just more difficult versions of mini games, 
but usually they're not. Usually they're just the same old games you always play and you blast through them without a problem. More should have been done to actually make these challenges that would have really justified the existence of the mode and added a lot more meat to the game. Square Off is a hidden little gem in the free play section. In it, you compete in mini games in order to grab territory on a board, doing your best to play strategically so as to steal pieces from your opponents. It's a simple thing, but it's another fun option that helps change things up when you get tired of regular partying. The Mario-thon can also be found in free play, and it's a stinking ter terrific idea that just about destroys itself for no logical reason. Here you and your friends play a handful of mini games, and at the end you're ranked. It's an amazing way to get in a quick Mario Party session without just free playing a few games and having to keep track of your points yourself. It makes the game much more suitable for tournaments and the like. We had a little mini tournament at Arlapalooza, everyone loved it. The problem? It only uses 10 mini games. 10! And the whole game has like 80! I cannot fathom why they chose to limit it so much, but despite these being very fun mini games, you can only play them so many times all close together before you're just kind of done. I understand limiting the online Mario-thon, which of course we'll talk about in a bit, but for local play, this makes no sense and cripples what would have otherwise been a mode I used very frequently. It would have been the perfect alternative to hours long play sessions, but now it's only a fun diversion that sadly gets old fast. In Toad's Rec Room, you've got all the weird games that use multiple switches. I didn't get to play around with these too much and I couldn't exactly capture footage for technical reasons that may be obvious, but they're fairly interesting. I was surprised, but also a little glad that there isn't a huge spotlight on these games because obviously they use configurations that aren't always possible unless you've got multiple systems and copies of the game. I'm glad that Nintendo tried something a little different here and it's nice that their desire to innovate didn't drag down the rest of the experience, you know? It's just an option, there if you want it, come check out these weird little mini games. The last thing to do in Super Mario Party is play online. To the surprise of probably no one, this feature is extremely lackluster. First off, you can only play Mario-thon with the limitations I mentioned earlier. And look, I get Nintendo not wanting us to play full parties with randos online. It probably wouldn't be very fun, you get people trolling and rage quitting and it just, it wouldn't be the same. I still think it should be an option and that they shouldn't have such tight control over exactly how we enjoy the products we buy. But fine, I'll give them that one thing. Parties with randos, yeah, let's just chuck that idea out the window. But. There's no reason we shouldn't be able to play with our own friends. Yes, this kind of game is better in person, I know, but when you're a grown up, it can be really, really hard to get enough friends together all at the same time to play. The ability to voice chat with my friends while we get our party on online would be awesome. And Nintendo could easily work around some of the potential problems. Someone's connection drops? Well, this is all tied to your accounts. So it should be easy to just drop them back into the game when they reconnect. They have to drop out and stay out out for whatever reason, replace them with a CPU. You all have to put the game on hold for a while, just include the ability to suspend a game. It would be super easy. Nintendo is trying and trying to get into the online game and now they're even charging for us to play online and it's so, so annoying when they drag their feet on stuff like this. When it was free, it was kind of like, whatever, but now that it's not free, it's kind of like, come on, you know what I'm saying? And then, what do you know, the meager Mario-thon we do have kind of stinks. The game lags, there's nasty input delay and as far as I can tell there's no penalty for players dropping out so expect to be interrupted a lot. It's just not good. <laughs> it's not fun. It was not done well. If you're gonna do something you might as well do it right. So here they would have probably been better off not including an online component at all. The simple ability to play literally anything with other people online is not the ultimate goal here. If we're playing Mario Party online we want to play Mario Party online or at the very, very least for what we do get to work well. Moving on though, on top of all the different modes to play, there's also some casual stuff for a single player to accomplish. Everything earns you points and you can use these to purchase music and stickers and other stuff. You can use your stickers to create little mural kind of things, which is kind of fun, I guess. Then there are gems to collect from the main modes and if you get them all, you're the super mega party starty or whatever. It's all a lot like Challenge Road. Pretty darn superfluous though, I can appreciate it in its own way. It's nice to just have 
have something to do. Something that it feels like you're working toward through regular play to trigger that dumb little part of your brain that desires positive reinforcement. Now, I don't know about you, but I know I got that at least. Having all this unlocky stuff is also a lot like having a hub versus a menu. It's a small detail that nevertheless adds to the feel of a game and makes it seem less by the numbers. I've got individual issues with the game's various modes, as you've seen, but the problem of difficulty that I've mentioned a few times is one that runs through the entire experience. When you enter the plaza, you can set the difficulty to whatever you want, though even cranking it up to max doesn't do much to make the CPUs any less incompetent. Even playing minigames for the first time, I found myself beating them easily. I'll fully admit that this isn't really a problem when you're playing with four people, but like I said, I can't do that as much as I'd like, even though I could if I could play online, and I end up relying on CPUs a fair amount. In the game's defense, programming AI for 80 different games was probably quite the task, and I do hugely appreciate that no matter what mode I'm playing, CPUs can fill in all the gaps I need, so I never strictly need other people it just would have been nice if they were a smidge harder to beat. As it is, the amount that I can do as a single player is more than I ever expected, but still more limited than I would like. Super Mario Party has its fair share of problems and confusing limitations. It falls into the same traps that plague too many of Nintendo's first party titles. But to bring up Kirby and Mario Tennis one last time, it absolutely succeeds at surpassing those games in terms of content and the overall effort it feels like went into it. There are a lot of different things for four friends to do here, and even one person can put in a fair number of hours before they feel like they've exhausted every mode. Most importantly though, the main party modes are just plain fun. You'll yell, you'll punch each other, you'll shake your fist in feeble anger, it'll be one of the best times being upset you've ever had. Like I said, we played it at Arlapalooza and we had two stations set up that were basically never empty. People just wanted to play Mario Party all day even though they couldn't because Loxton kept hogging it. I certainly hope this title acts as a new launching point for the series and that things only improve from here, but in the meantime, this does a great job scratching that party itch I've apparently had for the last 15 years. I give Super Mario Party a solid five out of seven. So, what did you think of this party? This shindig, this get together, this soiree, this gala, this gathering, this bash, this fete, this function, this...